thank you very much. My name is Abdel Aziz and I am from Sudan and I am studying Integrated Water Resource Management at the Swedish University of Agricultural Science. Okay, great. And uh, you, sir? <laughs> yes, my name is Kenge James Gunyan yeah. and uh, I'm taking a I, I, I already actually graduated yeah. in the science for sustainable development with a specialization in water and food security at Lille Shopping University and uh, I'm also from Uganda within the Nile Basin. Okay, great. So with the two of you here from uh, two different countries in the, in the Nile River Basin, it seems like a, a good opportunity to ask you to, to help us understand what do we mean when we talk about sharing the waters of the Nile River. I mean, uh, what do we mean by shared, shared benefits? What are those shared benefits? Maybe you guys can, uh, can give us some, some insight. Yeah. Well, if I take my country, Sudan, as an example, we have uh, plenty of water. We have land that for agriculture. And also the country has different climate, actually. So you can cultivate different crops. Mm. So if we can use the water from the Nile to cultivate different crops that are not suitable in the other countries, maybe yeah. we can reach a point where this rice, for example, cultivated in Uganda, wheat in Sudan, and then we can uh, uh, exchange or we can use this virtual water trade concept in this mm. way, actually. And the other thing also, pollution, because Nile also there's a big issue about pollution. Mm. If the whole region, they can uh, shake hands together and work together towards uh, rehabilitation of the Nile Basin or restoration of the Nile Basin, I guess okay. that's the only way. Yeah. So, and, and, uh, and for you, what is, what is it? Uh, for me, I look at it in, in, in terms of uh, what uh, Uganda is uh, interested in, uh, what kind of benefit they want from the Nile. Yeah. And uh, on the Ugandan point of view, we look at the Nile in terms of uh, energy. So if we can get energy from the Nile, we would uh, like sustain our economy. The major problem in Uganda is we, we don't have enough energy. Sometimes we have electricity only for six hours per day. And if we can have dams on the Nile, and the same amount of water would still go to, to, to Sudan and Egypt. In a way, we would get a different kind of benefit. They would need the water for, for irrigation, while we only need the water for hydropower. And still the same amount of water would still go to Sudan and Egypt. And in a way, the concept of benefit sharing would be very important since different countries have different needs from the same kind of resource. Yeah. What do you think about the idea of, of, of the, the, the crop sharing? Crop sharing, in term, as I said in Uganda, Uganda is a, much of Uganda is located within the Great Lakes region of Africa, and uh, much of the agricultural activity is rain fed. So in a way, Uganda wouldn't need so much water for, for, for irrigation, since there's still quite a lot of rainfall, and the agriculture is mainly rain fed based. So mm. there wouldn't be no, any need to, to use the Nile for irrigation, and in a way, it would give access to those other lower riparian countries that need it for irrigation. Yeah, and uh, so and from the from from the pollution uh, perspective, how how does uh, what kind of um, cooperation does Sudan need, let's say, from the upper riparians, in order to uh, well, I mean, basically, have less pollution within within their waters. I mean, is it is it, do you mean pollution in terms of? Kind of chemical pollution, or do you mean other kinds of pollution? Well, because all the Nile countries actually, they are, they are ec the economic is based on agriculture, and agriculture. If you say agriculture, that means there's a lot of chemicals that people they use as pesticide, or uh, and then Sudan is uh, in the downstream country. So whatever happened on the upper stream countries. Sudan will be affected, so mm -hmm. which means that people they need to work together to
to raise the awareness among the farmers, among mm. the local people, communities, and even fishing. Sometimes people they spray pesticide to kill fishes, yeah. and that's very dangerous for themselves and also for the people on downstream. Do you, do do the two of you? I want to ask a question. Do you, the two of you think that? that the benefits sharing needs to actually come outside of the framework of, of just water in the Nile Basin. Because it seems to me like if, if we're talking about pollution, then the Uganda should reduce the amount of pollution it's putting you know, in, in, in the, the basin. But on, on the other hand, uh, if Sudan reduces its pollution levels, it's only Egypt that benefits. It's not, it's not Uganda. So how, how do you... How, how do you end up sharing benefits, or where do you see the mutual uh, benefits out of that? Is it from sharing knowledge? Is it from, where is it, where, where are the mutual benefits? Uh, I think, uh, in my opinion, uh, I would say that uh, benefit sharing should go hand in hand with the risk sharing. It means that uh, if uh, Uganda is to, you know, have an input on the Nile which will benefit the lower riparians and then in a way the lower riparians should be able to help Uganda you know with the capacity you know to be able to clean you know the Nile so in a way if you have to share benefits and then the countries should also be able to you know to share the risks in, in cleaning the Nile so in a way there has to be some mutual agreement between the two countries on how to share the benefits and also how to share the the, the risks of you know making the Nile clean. Mm. And there's a good example actually about the Rhine, Rhine River, because always when people they say about benefit sharing or risk sharing, they mention Rhine River actually. Because for the Netherlands, even though they were not affected, but they contribute to this huge amount of money for the risk of the river of the Rhine River. Mm. And that's need really goodwill from the politician, actually. Okay, so there is something to learn from uh, from European initiatives as well. Yes, there is. Yes. Okay, good to hear. <laughs> so yeah, so it means that there is a reason to have the Stockholm World Water Week. Yes. <laughs> well, because the Stockholm Water Week is like example presenting the whole uh, continent. Yeah. So there are many examples that people they can take it home actually, yeah. whether right. in, at the basin level or the country level or community or even family. Level. So that's very interesting. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank I think that.